Hello. In the exercises this week, we are going to be considering Markov chains that only have recurrent states. If we run the chain for long enough, it is therefore guaranteed that each state will be visited multiple times. In the exercises for this week, we will learn how to perform various types of calculations for Markov chains that only have recurrent states, using a mixture of analytic formulas and by using sampling. To start with, however, we will revise the material that was introduced last week on sampling Markov chains by using this material to estimate multi-step transition probabilities for Markov chains by sampling. Let's begin this survey by considering what it is we want to calculate. Remember that we are considering a Markov chain that only has recurrent states. An example transition mark graph for a Markov chain that only has recurrent states is shown here. What we now want to do is the following. We want to suppose that we are sim start simulating a Markov chain from this state. We then want to perform n steps using the Markov move function that was introduced last week and that has been described in detail in previous videos. The question we would like to answer is, after this n if this series of n steps, what is the probability that this series of n moves finishes here in state 2? If we were writing a function to answer this question, we might proceed as follows. We might define a function called transition and pass four arguments to the function. The first of these arguments, A, would be a numP array that contains the transition matrix for our Markov chain. The second argument, S, is the initial state that we are starting our Markov chain from. The next argument, N, is then the number of steps that we would like to take. The final argument, E, is the target state where we would like to end up. The internals of this function might then look something like this. We essentially call the Markov move function n times to generate our Markov chain. Furthermore, every time we call this function, we use the state that we have just arrived in for the S argument that tells us the state that we are initializing, initializing the new move from. The return value from the function is determined by working out the truth value of a logical proposition that tells us whether or not the state that our Markov chain ended up in after the n moves is the target state E or not. Our function will thus return 1 if our chain finishes in this target state E and 0 if it does not. In other words, the return value from our function is a Bernoulli random variable. This function, therefore, does not give us the answer to the question we desire. Remember, we wanted to find out the conditional probability of finishing in state E given that you started in state S and ran n steps of a Markov chain. We can, however, estimate this probability by calling this function multiple times and by calculating an average, as we have done so many times in this course. This is the task that you have to complete for the first exercise. Good luck, and as always, thank you for your attention.